everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Just Lying Around, a Detroit Lions podcast pre- presented by the world of football. I'm one of your hosts, Kyle Sutherland, and I am joined by Ad- my brother-in-law, Adam Snow. Adam, how are you doing? Hey, guys. Today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm excited for the first game that happened. Um, yeah, you, know, you, you so- still riding that high off of a preseason win? Oh, yeah, it is what it is, but <laughs> they won. Who cares? But uh, on this yeah, it's a preseason game. Who cares? Uh, yeah, well, well, I care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, on this week's show, we're going to be talking about the Lions' first preseason game as well as some news and a few releases and signings and what we're looking forward to our next preseason game. But first, we want to thank you for checking out our podcast. You can find our show on the World of Football podcast feed which is available on a multiple platforms including apple Podcasts, soundcloud tune in spotify iHeartRadio, and amazon music you can also find our podcast on the world of football youtube channel simply search for the world of football kamazoo or go to youtube.com at the world of football if you could go over there and subscribe hit the like button and let us know how we are doing that would be greatly appreciated. Also like the World of Football over on Facebook at facebook.com slash two of Kalamazoo and follow us on X at T-W-O-F-K-A-L-A-M-A-O-O. Z-O-O. Wow, you don't even know how to spell Kalamazoo, huh? Uh, hey, it's hard. One. It's your first time doing the host stuff. I get it. It's It's not easy, and you're still learning. You're only two weeks in. Uh, it, well, it's your typo. You got to fix it. Oh, my typo. Hold on. I gave you that thing to edit. So like, don't get on me about that. Uh, I'll, I'll fix it's it. your show this week. Yeah. Uh, anyways, and you can <laughs> use, use our timestamp on the description of this podcast. If you want to jump around the different topics we'll be discussing today. So let's begin the show week show. Uh, first topic up. Let's get it out of the way. The preseason game against the Giants. Uh, final score, 21-16. to 16. And I just want to go first half, second half. Um, All right. We're going to go from there. Um, first thing I want to discuss are the rookies. Uh, they look great. They're going to start. No need to worry about them. <laughs> uh, biggest thing, Brian Branch, he's the real deal. <laughs> he lit up Cole Bleasley and hit him in the backfield, and the whole stadium just lit up. Like, it was great. Yeah, uh, it was a heck of a highlight. You know, I, I wasn't able to watch the game live. Uh, I was out of town all weekend, but I caught, you know, the highlights. I watched some extra stuff from the game. I thought, yeah, solid. You know, he looked great. That big highlight's the one that, you know, made the rounds. Uh, he was definitely a player that we were kind of curious about, see if he'd start. And if he keeps playing like this, he's – He's got it. He's a starter. Yep, and he can he can do nickel safety. Um, he can even go out wide if needed. Um, there's no need to be worried about him at all. Um, mm-hmm. Also, Jack Campbell also great. He stopped um, the Giants quarterback was going to throw to running back, and Jack Campbell was step for step with him, and he snuffed it out. And stopped the pass, and he was in on a few uh, uh, running back uh, stop plays. Um, it was good stuff there. Yeah, I mean, look, I think it's good seeing this stuff from the rookies. I'm not going to be like super over excited like you. Like it's done. They're great. Look, it's preseason. They're playing against second, third stringers mostly. Uh, it's it's just nice to see the awareness they have where the ball is. That's what you want from the defensive side of the ball. So, uh, like I said, I'm not gonna say they're great. Like Branch sniffing out that you know that screen pass situation and making the play in the backfield. That's what you want. You want a guy who's gonna sniff out the ball and wrap up tackling. I'm tired of seeing defensive backs throwing a shoulder into a guy. Like I'm sick of that type of play from my defenders. I like the fact he got in there. He wrapped him up and brought him down. Jack Campbell, I'm liking the same thing. The awareness and knowing where he's got to be to make a play is the important thing to his game right now. So that's all I'm worried about. 
Yeah, it, it'll be great um, once they get with the first team defenses out there. What they oh yeah uh, really can do. Uh, Jack Campbell lined up with Anzalone. Uh, Brian Branch is lined up with um, Gardner Johnson. Like that, I think that right there when that happens, it's really gonna really help them out. Yeah, I mean, and it, it, right now it's uh, in a spot where, like, back you know the last couple of years we didn't really have the depth at defense to where I felt comfortable watching some of the guys they were subbing in. I'm like, Oh great. We're losing a, you know, a good piece in there to sub out a dude that I it honestly wasn't up to par for what we were hoping the defense to be. Now I think we're finally getting guys at depth positions. Like you can sub in a Rodrigo. You can move a few of these guys around to play different spots. And I think they're going to be all the better for it this year. Hopefully knock on wood, you know, dramatically better on defense. Oh yeah. Yep. And also on the offensive side, Jameer Gibbs, he had six carries for 19 yards. Um, But he was playing with the second, third string uh, offensive line. So, again, once he gets out there with a first string lineman, I think he's going to have a a lot better day. And he also caught caught a pass for 18 yards, which um, looked pretty good as well. Um, So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's evident the athleticism's there that we've been you know seeing in the tape from college, what we've been hearing about from camp, kind of the positions they're going to kind of bring him in at, not just running back, but maybe playing him at wide receiver while you got Montgomery in there. And obviously, it's preseason; you don't want to give away all the all the plays and you know maybe the more intricate parts of what this offense could look like. Uh, but he, again, another young, talented guy who shows that he's got the potential and has uh, at least the wherewithal to, you know, get out there and make a play and, and, and at different spots. Oh yeah. It'll be, uh, it'll be great. I'll either line up in the back or out wide, but yeah, uh, yeah we'll see. But also we have uh, Sam Laporta. I think he had one target um, going out and he dropped it, which he kind of beat himself up after the play, which I think he knows how to fix it. Won't happen again. Um. You know, again, preseason game one, I mean, guys are going to go into it differently. He's a rookie. You know, I'm not going to knock him for one target and dropping that one pass. I mean, obviously when we get to the real games that matter, hopefully that doesn't happen, but it's one preseason game. I'm not going to overreact to that. Yeah, and it- in his college days, like you could tell, he he knew how to play the game. He was great at it. Um, I think this is one of those things that he's going to learn from it. It won't happen again. So, no need to worry there. I would like to see and, him get targeted more. Like you said, the one target a little surprised by, but he's also right now projected to be your current starter. So you don't want him out there a whole ton for the preseason. So I again not worried about it. Oh, yeah. Yep. And also, I just want to say, thank the Lord we got Teddy Bridgewater because oh, I know <laughs> I know Nate Sudfeld, um, he's a great like quarterback coach or person to help Jared Goff see like certain things that plays when he comes back. But um, Nate Sudfeld, his first play of the game, thrown to Jameson Williams and threw in an inter- interception. Like, well, and then he, uh, yeah. later on he threw another interception. But, uh, it was not good. Yeah, not 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 what you want to see from your backup. You at least want him, like, he doesn't have to be a world beater. You want somebody who's competent and can put the ball where it's got to go. He doesn't have to get, you know, uh, the Jared Goff-like numbers. But you'd like him to come in and at least look efficient, and he did not. I mean, he eventually kind of seemed to settle in, then he threw that second pick. But, you know, with Bridgewater, that happened right after we recorded last week's show, so it didn't make it in. But I think it's a solid signing, and I think he's a capable backup that if if golf goes down and misses, you know, a week or two, you know, two or three weeks, he's the kind of guy that you feel comfortable with, you know, plugging in for a couple of games and not being the cause of you losing or a game and maybe not even being the cause of you winning, but keeping you from, you know, drastically losing production at that position. So, oh, I'm comfortable yep. with it. I'm fine. Yep. And I think yeah, Teddy Bridgewater, he's a serviceable quarterback for like one to two, maybe three games. Like you're not gonna it's not like a guaranteed no, oh, 
We lost golf. It's we're gonna lose the next three games. So I feel a lot better with Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and if it, hypothetically, and again, knock on wood, if golf is out for you know double digit weeks, even I feel like he would still be a guy that you know could get the job done. Hopefully, uh, but. Again, hopefully we don't need to see that, but you, you feel better knowing that he's sitting behind Goff in case of the worst-case scenario. Yep. And, and they got him for a deal. Like, I mean, remember when they signed, uh, was it Tim Boyle a couple years ago, to some big expensive contract for being a backup? It was, like, the most expensive backup quarterback in the league. And now, like, we got Bridgewater for, like, a steal. So I'll take it. I mean, Brad Holmes knows what he's doing when it comes to cutting the checks. So. <clears throat> Yeah, it was something like two point five million and up to five million. Yeah, uh, something like that. If ever if everything works out. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. And on to the second half. Uh we got a big play by Maurice Alexander, ninety five yard punt return for a touchdown. Uh to me, I think that'll seal his deal as a punt returner if he Keeps going the way he does, um, especially yeah, with I... um, especially with having Justin Jackson retired, which we'll talk about that in a little bit. But yeah, mm-hmm. I, I really like seeing what he did there. Yeah, I mean, of course, you want to see. This is the biggest part of the uh, of the preseason that I think coaches look for, and us as fans should be watching out for. It's the special team stuff. That's that's a little more where you're going to see the guys make or break. You know. Uh, roster spots and having him return that kick heck of a highlight by the way 95 yards a couple of those great spin moves in the middle of it was great but you know I, I won't say lock for the roster but it definitely helps your cause when you have that kind of vision and if he can return more kicks and make, he doesn't necessarily have to score touchdowns but if you if you can show good vision and you know if those other guys are doing what they're supposed to do I mean he might get that roster spot I mean I'm not gonna say he's gonna guarantee you get it but it definitely helps the cause oh yeah and and did you see golf on the sideline playing ball boy like running around getting the ball after the touchdown for him <laughs> oh yeah he it was like uh last year with um the running back that went to the saints when he was running oh, jamal for, williams yep, yep when he was running yeah. down the field jared golf was right there on the sidelines running with him yeah, heck yeah. yeah. You like to see that. And even though Jared didn't, you know, get dressed for the game, it was cool seeing him down there. And you wouldn't have known it was him unless somebody pointed it out, but it was cool seeing him down there to, to do that with him. So. Yeah. Like, it, yeah, it was great seeing all the starters there on the sidelines. Yeah. Not, they weren't dressed up, but they were still there to show support and everything. That's my biggest that problem. Why too. weren't they? Why weren't they in their helmet and, and uh, jersey like uh, Kirk Cousins was? Come on, guys, get your get get your act together like Kirk Cousins over there. Well, yeah, everyone can't be a Kirk O'Chains. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Anyways. you got jokes? Did you write that one down before we started? Like trying to add a little humor to your your repertoire here, you know? Silence some of your haters. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, uh, all right, where are we going? We're gonna talk about the defensive line. Um, I right. think through the whole whole uh, game, they were great. Like they kept, even though it was second or third string, like Julian Okora, three sacks. Romeo Okora, Nito Jones, one sack each, and even John Kaminsky. Uh, he had a couple tackles, and he also helped out with. Uh, play that Brian Branch made with uh, Cole Beasley. Mm-hmm. He went out and pushed uh, Cole Beasley off his uh, route, which gave the opportunity for Brian Branch to make that big play. So Yeah. Yeah. And Isaiah Bugs. He, Isaiah Bugs played too, right? Uh, yeah, a couple uh, um, series in the first half. Okay. Yeah, I mean – this has been one of the strengths since Brad Holmes and Campbell, you know, Dan Campbell came in was the defensive line has always kind of seemed to have the best depth on the team. Uh, it's kind of been that consistent throughout their tenure here. So I'm, I am a hundred percent happy with how this defensive line has played and the different kind of guys and different styles of play. Some of these dudes bring to the table when they you know get put into that lineup it allows Aaron Glenn and that defense to do a lot of different things. 
Yeah, and even like some of these guys that might get caught, um, I know there's a big discussion on Julian Okwara if he's going to make it or if he's not mm-hmm. going to make it. Um, him versus uh, Houston. Uh, even like Okwara going to a, like, if he does get caught, cut, um, uh, he could be a starter like on a different team, no problem. He could, yeah. Yeah. And then we also have uh, another UDFA um, star, Chase Coda from Oregon. Just say the whole word. UDFA, come on, man. Undrafted free agent. You can say it. <laughs> oh, Who, no, what, what are you trying to save time? You're not saving time. I had to explain it. Uh, anyways, well, that's your fault. Anyways, uh, I think second half on the offense, he was a star player. Um, he was – open a lot he had six catches for 60 yards and some of those catches he made like he had maybe two to three steps on the defender um and also he had uh adrian martinez thrown to him too which is another um rookie quarterback so i think if he continues to play like he is during preseason uh he might have a chance to make the team yeah, got to gotta keep it up. Like I said, I'm not – with preseason, I try not to get all wrapped up because we, we have somebody like this every year, a guy that balls out for a game or two in the preseason and that fans latch on to and then all complain when they get cut. Uh, you know, it's been your uh, Zimmers in the past. Uh, Zach what is it? Zach Zenner, that's what it was. Zach Zenner in the past. It's been your Tom Kennedy, you know, a guy who will end up on the practice squad. And th- this might be the role he eventually plays as a practice squad guy because we are – at the brim with wide receivers right now, you know, so I, I hope he does fine, you know, but I'm not going to get all excited about it. It's just, it's a preseason game against a bunch of third stringers. That's just my take. Yeah. And like, if he doesn't make the team, hopefully they can get him on the practice squad and be just like a, maybe a Zenner or um, Tom Kennedy comes in. If someone gets hurt, he kind of makes a couple plays here and there for the yeah. team. Yeah, I mean that's what that's what you want. That's the kind of guys you're looking for. Uh, so we'll see. Like I said, one game ain't gonna ain't gonna freak out about it. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll see you next week when he goes for a hundred yards <laughs> in another preseason game. Let's let's settle down there, yeah. champ. All right. Uh, you got to get excited because I am. <laughs> Do. You- you got to work on what excitement sounds like for everybody else. <laughs> oh yeah. Well. <laughs> this is me excited. Can't you okay, tell? Yeah, everybody take note. That's what he does. He do, that's how he is. <laughs> and then uh finally we got Adrian Martinez uh took over after like the mid of uh third quarter. Um he had a couple throws. Didn't look too bad out there. He ran in for a touchdown. So, yeah, I know with uh, Bridgewater coming in, it sounds like he might not make the team. Uh, it yeah. wouldn't be a bad, bad practice squad pickup. Yeah. Well, again, another another guy that, hey, I, I hope he gets some tape out there. And I don't like seeing guys get cut, but it's the nature of the business. We already got, you know, Hendon Hooker obviously will be sitting off to the side for a while. So, I mean, this guy could be a practice squad dude if you need it. But I just don't see where you would waste another roster spot on a quarterback, even on your practice squad, when you got a Bridgewater and a Sudfield. So, yeah, like even if uh, Hooker was healthy, they, there's no way they would put uh, two rookie quarterbacks on the roster. Roster. Oh yeah, if, if if Hooker was healthy, it would be <laughs> Bridgefield and him as your two backups, and they wouldn't even bother with Sudfield or this guy. So, again, uh, what are we even talking about here? <laughs> But yeah, that's uh, the overall um, thing of the preseason uh, game one, uh, twenty-one to sixteen. Uh, yeah. On to topic number two, which is the news. Uh, Adam, you're really gonna love this one. I know you love McDonald's. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, a body by McDonald's. Let's do this. <laughs> But the Detroit Lions and McDonald's has partnered up uh, for a new game deal bundle box the day after games. So if the Lions get an interception during the game, uh, I believe it's 
you got to go on their app, enter some code or something. But it's if you buy one Big Mac, you get a second one for free. Uh, yeah. And that started the first preseason game. So luckily, I think it was the last play of the game. The Lions got their interception. So hopefully everyone went And then how and quickly did you turn around and use your pudgy fingers to get that on the app? Oh, I was already at McDonald's waiting. <laughs> Do you have the box? Did you really go? Like, I, I want to see the box. No, no, I mean, I've seen I the picture. I, I got to get the box at least. No, I'd be waiting in line for 40 minutes. So the way they're running right now. Well, don't wait. Don't you have connections there? Can't you just get us the boxes for free? Uh, nope. They all left. Oh, they all quit. Oh, man. <laughs> but maybe next time if they get another interception, I'll try it out. See how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right, what's next? We we also have Governor Whitmore went to the Lions practice. I know that's big news for everyone. Um, (laughs) I was really excited to see her. Yeah, big (laughs) grudge. But she did an interview. Uh, Ultimately, she thinks it's going to be a great season. Uh, She's excited. And, well, uh, what else is knows? she supposed to say? Well, nope, we're going to be terrible this year. I'm just here to, <laughs> you know, see everybody healthy before the season. Like, no. of course, that's what she's going to say. But I like, I do like seeing that she was there. It's cool seeing all the people who are excited. Like, I think everybody are are everybody is legitimately excited about this team. It's it's pretty much palpable in the state of Michigan. I think the excitement for the Lions. A little bit of pes- uh, pessimism, not going to lie. You can still sense it a little bit, like it's still the Lions, but it feels different. It, it it really does. And it's cool to see the governor, you know, just pop out for a day, you know, check him out. Yep. Uh, well, I was hoping she would say something like she's, she's going to pave the road for the Lions <laughs> when they win the Super Bowl so they can have a parade <laughs> on it. I was waiting for that. I mean, it's already paved. I mean, you're going to repave it? Well, uh, yeah, I just got to get all the potholes out of it. <laughs> Have you been down Woodward before? I don't think there are any potholes. I'm not sure. I don't live over there, but uh, well, uh, yeah, somebody uh, could tell me. Does Woodward have potholes? <laughs> uh, well, they should have the parade in Lansing where the governor is. Well, they won't. It'll be Woodward Avenue. We know it. It's Woodward Avenue in Detroit. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, yeah. Good to see her out there. Um, also, yeah. the legend himself, Barry Sanders, is getting a statue at Ford Field, which the way all he's done, uh, it's I think it's well deserved, and uh, it'll be revealed week two against the Seahawks. So make sure everyone, um, if you're listening, watching, just make sure you check it out because I think that'll be a good thing to see. Yeah, it should be pretty cool. We'll we'll get to see it when we're there uh, against the Raiders. Uh, we actually get to see a couple things that day, which we'll get to in a second. But I'm I'm excited to see it. Uh, hopefully, Barry's the first of a few statues we get. Uh, Barry is probably the I'll use quotes because it's subjective to different Lions fans. Barry is the greatest Detroit Lion player. Let's you know it's him. And then I think you know you got your Calvin Johnson, and then I think after that it's going to be a who's who. It, it could be a lot of different guys. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see a statue of Calvin Johnson there too. That that'd be good. That's got that's got to be the next one, right? Yeah, because I think all their uh, feuding back and forth is pretty much over. So I, I, I hope so. It his... sounds like the organization finally mended a, a lot of those fences. Yep, and he'll get his recognition soon after, which that'll be good also. And a big and... fat cardboard check. Well, yeah, that'd be uh, interesting. (laughs) (laughs) And then also we have Lomas Brown is getting inducted into the Ring of Honor Pride of the Lions. Um, He played for the Lions from 1985 to 1995, all pro five times with the Lions. So uh, good for him. I think it's well-deserved. Yeah, Lomas has been a part of the broadcast team, you know, doing the uh, radio play-by-play. So there's a great video of him, 
you know, in a commercial break with President uh, uh, Rod Woodson, uh, or Rod Wood, well, not Woodson, uh, but our, our you know president of the team in the broadcast booth. They go to commercial break. They play the video on the video board at the stadium during the preseason game, and uh, announce that. So that was a really cool moment, cool video. If you haven't checked it out, I'm sure you could go to the Lions YouTube page or any of their social media check it out. And they're doing that on the the game we're going to be at is the, the the game he'll be inducted into the pride of uh, pride of the Lions, which should be pretty cool. Oh, the okay. same yeah, the same day they that. wear the uh, same day they wear the blue helmets that I just got in the mail. Oh, geez. I'm very excited. <laughs> Can you put it on? Can you show everyone? It's a mini helmet, Kyle. It is oh. too small for my melon. Darn it! But well, yeah, darn it. I... You can put it on your cat. One of your three cats. Uh, yeah, I'll get a picture for you. Oh, please. <laughs> well, I think this might be Lomas Brown's second time getting inducted. If I read it right, I'll have to look into that. But I think this will be his second time getting inducted. Into the Lions Ring of Honor? That mm. I think, yeah, I'll have to look it up. So I'm pretty sure you can be... next next episode. Yeah, you think Barry's been inducted more than one time in the Ring of Honor? Come on now, no, you get I one induction him. into the Ring of Honor. No, no, I induct him every week. I don't need to. Uh, nope, don't even need to, need to know what you mean by that. <laughs> okay. uh, anyways, uh, some Emmanuel Mosley injury update. Um, seems like it'll be another four to five weeks push back from returning. Uh, than originally planned, um, which I'm not too worried about. We got uh, uh, Jacobs, who's going to be in his spot until he returns. Um, it'll be a battle between them two when he when Mosley comes back. So I wouldn't be yeah. too worried about that right now. Yep, not worried. Nope. Yeah, but if uh, Jacobs gets hurt, then then I'd be worried a little bit because <laughs> I don't I don't want to see Will. Will Harris out there? No, we don't. What? Why is no offense to Will Harris? I mean, I'm sure you're a great dude, but I that is the one roster decision I keep questioning every year. Why is he still on the team? No offense to him personally, but as a player on that roster, I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, well, I think when he converted to a uh, cornerback, seemed like he was doing a little better from safety. So. Might be why they resigned him. But yeah, well, uh, we'll see. There's a few yeah, there was a few plays last week where it's like, oh God, is that Will Harris? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, he's he's the one player on the team now that when I when I see a bad play and I go, Will Harris again, like that I hate saying his name because it means something bad usually happens. Yeah. So yeah. We'll see. Hopefully, Mosley won't be out too long. Um, let's move on to our t- third topic. Uh, we're just going to go through a couple releases, signings, and uh, yeah, couple, a retire, person retired. Yeah, what so, about what was up with that? Well, Justin, if anyone hasn't heard, Justin Jackson retired. Um, he was a third string running back last year. We signed with the Lions. Um, I thought he was he did great as a punt returner, third string running back. Um, he had a touchdown last year. And uh, for me, like knowing Justin Jackson was um, out there, I, didn't, I wasn't too worried. Like I knew he'd make a couple plays. Um, but yeah, apparently uh, this re- he retired, uh, and it was unexpected, but. Uh, Dan Campbell understood and sounds like there was no ill will towards him. Like he just wished him the best of luck. Um, if Jackson needed anything like Dan Campbell would, would help him out however he could. So, yeah. Hmm. 27. Uh, you know, yeah. Very hmm. shocking. Yeah, well, sometimes people just tired or they just don't want to yeah. do it anymore. So hopefully yeah. Hopefully it wasn't something too bad. Yeah. Hopefully. And then the other big news, uh, Khalif Raymond got a two-year extension. Um, 
to me, that seems a good thing. Uh, he was our kick returner. Um, he played some wide receiver. Like, he was one of those guys, sounds like, uh, even after practice is over, he was out there with Amon Ross, St. Brown, catching balls. Just a hard worker. Where he came from, the Jets, down and out. And he came back to the Lions, working his butt off. Like, yeah, that's a good good thing for him. Yep. A little shocked that it was a two-year. Like I thought maybe you'd do a one-year, but two years, I mean, you know, not breaking the, breaking the bank with him. I mean, he was a solid guy that was very reliable when we needed to rely on him, so not mad about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, good good thing there. And then also we signed Teddy Bridgewater. Probably oh, did we, Kyle? Number... Did yep. we? You, you, you <laughs> well, didn't mention wanna... that. You didn't seem excited about that. I just want to make sure everyone knows we signed Teddy Bridgewater because he's going to be our number two. <laughs> Um, we also, with the uh, Justin Jackson uh, retired, we signed Benny Sneal and uh, Divine, Devin. Oh, I'm going to botch that. Divine Zigbo? Zigbo, yep. Yeah, it was Zigbo. Perfect. Uh, they played both during the uh, game. Didn't look too bad. So once they uh, maybe play with the first round or second round, uh, offensive line, though, show a little more flash. So, good there. And then we have, um, was it last year we signed our drafted uh, Logan Stenberg, number four? I don't remember. I'm, ba- I'm bad with remembering where they were drafted. Yeah, I think he was drafted number four. Uh, he was a guard. Last year, he didn't really work out. And so they released him this year. Uh, they also waived wide receiver Avery Davis, but uh, I think it sounds like today they resigned him. Oh. So they might try him again. Hmm. And then uh, they released so a long snapper. They had a battle between Scott Daly and Jake McQuaid. Um, they released Jake McQuaid, so it sounds like Scott Daly's got the job. So, I know you're pretty excited about the long snapper battle there. Hey, you know me. Long snapper is essential in Lions history. I mean, when you had the, the mule, you know, the guy we could rely on for as long as we did. You know, death taxes and Don Muleback. That's that's what we as Lions fans you know, hung our hat on for many, many years. So it is a vital position to this team. Uh, yeah, and then yeah, but we have the our Michigan Panthers own Trey Quinn. Uh, played oh yeah, here we go. He played a couple snaps last week. I think he caught a ball, um, but apparently he's been waived uh, on an injury mm. injury des- designation. Oh, sorry, so I don't know if he got words are hard. The game. Yeah, they are, but I don't. It doesn't look like he got hurt during the game, but looks like he's been waived. Also, mm. uh, Tom Kennedy's been waived too on the injury injury designation. So, yeah, those are two people that got waived first for injuries. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I like when I saw when we went to that Michigan Panthers game, watching Trey Quinn out there, like he. Seemed pretty good. And like I was yeah. surprised he got picked up for the Lions, and it's like, man, this guy, this guy might actually do something. Yeah, they're, they're, look, there's there's a lot of you know a few guys in the USFL that are definitely talented. You just gotta you know give them a shot in the NFL. Some of them will pan out, and some of them won't. Like what we had like seven guys last year who played in the USFL make the Pro Bowl. So, I mean, yeah. can't go wrong signing him. I thought he looked pretty decent playing for the Panthers. So. Yeah, and there's a couple more uh, USFL players we got that were yeah. signed on the team also. So hopefully they yeah. pan out. So, yeah. And then let's move on to topic number four. Week two predictions. Adam, are you excited for week two? Preseason? It is the preseason, so no, I am not excited. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, again, looking forward to seeing some footage from the joint practice. Uh, that's something we didn't really touch on, but you know, the Lions in the joint practice with the Giants uh, sounded like the Lions came out looking like the uh, better team. Again, it is just a practice, uh, so I'm not going to be over the moon about it, but it is cool to see you know, the effort, which is very evident from this Lions team that they have that. And that's all I want to see. Keep up the effort, stay healthy, and you know, don't make dumb mistakes. That's all I want from the preseason. I don't care if you get the win or loss. Just stay healthy. Anyway, final score, 47-45. I don't care. 47 to 45, okay. Keep dreaming. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> a win's a win. Darn it. Uh, but the biggest thing for me, um, i like to see Jamison Williams get a couple more targets. and. Uh, oh, yeah. Actually catch the ball. I know he had a great end zone. Um, two point conversion catch, uh, heck of a one hander. Yep. Yep. And then he, but he had a uh, wide open uh, thrown to him by Nate Sudfeld, which looked like a great throw, but it went off his hands and fell on the ground. <laughs> That's one of those things Again. where you can't can't miss it. Pre season, uh, it's fine. Stop worrying about yep. it. I'll keep saying that in the regular season. Hey, look, if this happened in the regular season, again, week one when he's back, I'll be like, all right, yeah, knock some rust off. or Because you know, he'll be back in, what, week seven? So he's suspended yeah, the first week six seven. weeks, so back week seven. You know, seven, eight, nine, I'll give him that time frame to kind of get get kind of back into the groove of things. After that, then, yeah, then he got to make that catch then. But it's preseason. Let's just settle down, fellas and ladies. <laughs> settle down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna I, say that I'm, a lot because Lions fans are gonna overreact to this kind of stuff. Just settle down; yeah. it's fine. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Jamison Williams. Like, it'll yeah. take time, but I think everyone's just waiting for him to break out, and they're tired of waiting, and they just want to see that couple first big plays from him. We have an embarrassment of riches right now on this team. You know, Jamison Williams is one of those pieces where you. You hope when he's plugged in, he'll he'll either make the play or he's going to be the guy that's going to distract other guys so they can make plays. Uh, but as of right now, I mean, he's another weapon. He's not the only weapon we have. So just chill. We still got Amon Ra. We still got a good solid Khalif Raymond. We still got Craig, uh, not Craig Reynolds. Um, who's the wide receiver Reynolds? Uh, Josh geez. Josh Reynolds. Yep. yep. Josh Reynolds. And... You know, I'm not worried about it. Then you got Jameer Gibbs, who's going to play like a wide receiver sometimes. So, Laporta, hopefully he, you know, steps up. Not worried about it. We got weapons. Yeah, I just, I don't want to see him go, him running 40 miles an hour down the field. <laughs> We're getting. Oh I man, do. I gotta, I gotta as long as he catches it. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. I, he'll be, He'll do good. So, not too worried about that. Um, also, I want to see what Teddy brings to the table uh, next game. See how he does uh, versus what Nate Sud- Sudfeld did in the first game here. I, I think it's going to be a dra- not like a big change, but it'll be noticeably better. So. Yeah, I'd like to see yeah. him get a, a quarter. Give him the first quarter with as many of the starters as you can give, I, I doubt, you know, we're not going to see golf preseason. We probably won't see Amon Ra preseason, but you know, some of these other guys that could, that need the reps, you know, some of the offensive linemen probably should get reps just to get their bodies ready for game one. You're playing the chiefs. You want to be physically ready, but you know, I just want to see Bridgewater at least get a quarter and then we'll figure out the third string quarterback stuff. Yeah. The, he, um, does he like to run? Also, or does he, he, does Teddy Bridgewater like to run? I don't, I don't know. I'll ask him. I, I, I'll have to look into that. I think he does, but after a couple he, surgeries he had. He, he was known as a scrambler, but I think he's developed a lot better as a pocket passer. He probably will still use his legs now and then, but I'm sure Campbell and them are saying, hey, like, stay in the pocket. You know, Very golf-like, I think, is what they're expecting him to play like. And with that offensive line, he should – 
he should be fine. He should be able to set up, you know, take his drop back in the pocket and, you know, have no problem there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even during practices, like, if he does, if he is like a running quarterback, if he still has got it into him, uh, in it, in it for him to do it, like, that's another thing they can practice during practices. Like, what do we got to do for like a running quarterback? Um, so, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Like, he, he doesn't join practice till today. Today was his first day of practice, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Home, or, Campbell said he was going to have him out there throwing the ball and practicing. So, all right, it's exciting. Can you tell I'm excited for Bridgewater to be on the team? <laughs> God, you would not stop texting about it. I've never seen you so excited for a backup quarterback before. It's yeah. A little sad. Yeah. It's yeah, like a Michigan fan excited for their backup quarterback. I mean, it's nauseating. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they got like 20 dip backup quarterbacks on their teams. So. Jeez. Not too worried about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, also I'd like to see a little more out of Dylan Drummond. Uh, again, Chase Coda. And, um, yeah, those two. I, I don't know. Like, if Dylan Drummond, um, the way he sounds like in practices, like, he's really balling out. Like, if he can put yeah. out a uh, couple solid um Pre couple uh, next two games, if he can really ball out, like I don't think it'll ever happen. But if he can do that, like I'd be a little worried about um, Marvin Jones. Uh, hmm. I don't know. I, I won't go as far as to say worried about Marvin's spot on the team, but Drummond, the uh, what was it? Goff said he was the third most productive or best wide receiver on the field so far during uh, camp. I heard he was the second best behind Amon second. Yeah. Well, so, so somewhere up there, second, third, whatever it, the quote is, it's you know you you want to hear that. And I'm I'm excited to see what else this guy could do. I I like to see him be more productive. I'd like to see Laporta, you know, show a little more about what he's got. Again, not worried about him, but I would like to see a couple things. Um, yeah. And then maybe, maybe some more out of those rookies, like if Branch makes another big play. Like I said, as long as he's following the ball, that it appears like he's already got that down. Nose for the ball like uh, Jack Campbell. That's all I want to see. Stay healthy and stay healthy. That's it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'd like to see Branch lay out another big hit like that again. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> they don't all have to be like laid out hits. Just make a oh, good, yeah. solid tackle. Wrap them up. Yeah. All right, wrap I'm this segment up. Come on. Uh, okay, but yeah, that's it. Uh, next game, uh, week two against Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, it's Saturday, August nineteenth at one p.m. So okay, I know we having trouble finding the uh, this week's uh, game on the TV. I so I was out of town, so like I said, I couldn't watch it. I downloaded the Fox Two app to watch the game, but supposedly, at least in our neck of the woods in Kalamazoo area. It ended up being on the local Fox station, so uh, yeah, they didn't they didn't really promote it very well because I was scrambling around because I thought we'd get it like on YouTube TV, and I looked oh. at the schedule and I was like, holy, I, I can't, I don't see the game. <laughs> like, but yeah, was it on there for you? Yeah, someone on uh, X said, yeah, if you can't see the game, it's on Fox 17 local. So just okay. look at that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and then if you have NFL Plus, I mean, I I'm not an NFL Plus person right now. Um. So, but there'll be a way to find it. And I guess they re-aired they re-aired the game on NFL Network at like one in the morning on Saturday. So they'll probably re-air the game. Like the NFL Network's got all the preseason games after they've aired. So. Yeah. Hopefully, it won't be too hard to find this week. Yeah. But probably yeah. shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. All right, anything else? Uh, this closing credits, Adam, if you want to take that away. Well, it would be my absolute pleasure, sir. Uh, we hope you enjoyed listening to our f- second episode of our podcast and come back for more. Be sure to visit the World of Football's website, www.theworldoffootball.com. 
uh, for news, links, upcoming events, original articles, videos, and more. If you want to get in touch with us, send an email to info at theworldoffootball.com, and it will be relayed to us. Uh, make sure you put uh, just lying around in the subject line so we know. Uh, or you can connect with us by either liking the World of Football on Facebook or following the World of Football on our X account. Uh, those links will be in the episode description. Uh, also, be sure to check out our flagship show, which I'm a part of. I am the co-host of that show. Uh, this Week in the World of Football, which is up every Tuesday, uh, obviously hosted by my dad, his father-in-law, Randy Snow. So go over there, check us out, where we talk about the a whole world of football, not just the Detroit Lions. The Lions are a small, tiny sliver of the pie that we do over there at the World of Football. Um, so be sure to check that out, guys. Uh, you can also find that podcast in the same podcast feed you found this one. And on the YouTube channel, which is, again, youtube.com slash at the world of football. Or just search for the World of Football Kalamazoo YouTube channel. You'll find us. Give us a like, and uh, we'd greatly appreciate that. Uh, again, any other links are down in the description. Yep. And this week I'm drinking a Red Bull. So if I don't look lively and I need to drink a couple more, just let me know. And I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do yeah, it you, were getting, you, you were getting some comments uh, trying to get you... Yo, know, amp up the excitement a little bit. I I think you taking control of the show a little bit helps. You still got you know it's only the preseason, so you got till week one of the regular season to get your your act together. So bear with us, everybody, or bear with him, more like. Yeah, well, you're a natural. I'm I'm still learning, but anyways, uh, I have that on video, this. just so you know. Now I'm never letting that one go. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, that's it for this uh, week. Uh, remember, get out there and drink the blue Kool Aid. And <laughs> as always, uh, and Dan Campbell, we trust. And remember, go Lions. <laughs>